Today we're going to talk about seeing as an artist. And that's kind of a vague, kind of an artsy term. Um, but I, what I think it means is that we want to see things differently. Uh, we want to interpret things in terms of shape, value, and color, instead of trying to be so literal, like a camera. A camera sees everything the same. It doesn't discriminate. Uh, it, it, it gives you sharp edges in the background, foreground. It focuses in everywhere. And color is very uh, basic and generic. It doesn't give you any uh, interpretation there uh, as far as the color goes either. So it's impossible to recreate creation exactly as we see it. But what we can do is suggest. We can suggest the light and uh, we can suggest simplification of something to make it recede and go back or uh, sharpen edges, uh, make the foreground darks darker to make things come forward. So we can make decisions as artists um, that is different than, than, than a photograph. And I think that's real important to do because just to copy a photograph without interpreting what we see, I think it is just a copy of a photograph. And it's not only boring, but I don't think it's very beautiful to look at. So taking a look at a landscape or a photograph here, this is in Colorado and it's a cloudy day. The sun is kind of coming and going. It's not real bright, but it's not really uh, absent either. You can see a little bit of the cast shadows here under the trees and under the fence. So a little bit of sunlight there. I might decide to push that a bit more. But I want to take this photograph, which I think is a bit on the boring side as far as, again, making decisions on where to push the color or where to make edges a bit sharper or softer. So I want to interpret that myself. I want to make those decisions. And again, the photograph is just a place to start. It gives me a basic idea of composition, somewhat an idea of color. But I think we would improve our, our, our color sense better if we would maybe when we work from photographs to work from black and white, because then you're forced to think through what color you're using as opposed to just copying the color. I can think through the background colors of the blue greens and blues in the background, trees and mountains. How do I want to show that in order to suggest the distance, not to just copy what I see? So um, first thing, if we just work kind of back to front, I mean, I'm on Photoshop here, and it's a good way to make changes on the photograph or to show changes. Now, I usually would just do a color study, a small six by eight or even smaller, just different ideas of, of, of how to approach the color. But Photoshop's kind of good too. I use it mostly to um, critique students' work so I can paint on top of it and then send it back and then talk over what I'm doing. So it's a good tool to use, but not necessary. So. You don't have to necessarily go out and get Photoshop uh, once you see this, but it is a good tool to use. So first thing I want to do in the background, you can see what I did. I pulled that together a little bit. The background, not only is the color too dead looking, there's way too much detail. All these bare trees back in here, these dead, uh, I think they're aspens up in the mountain. If I pull that together and use more blues, blue greens, two different values, just, just to suggest a little bit of form. Now one value, just this color right here, I think would be too little. It would, it would still flatten the hillside, but introducing two values now gives that hillside a bit more shape. Not a lot. It doesn't do a lot. It certainly doesn't give it so much shape and variation that it comes forward, which I don't want it to do. So just two values there. I think gives me all the variation and value I want. I could maybe vary the color, but not the value. What I mean by that, I could add another color in here, but make it the same value. So if I did add another color back in there, let's pick that out and let's go a bit more violet. I want to stay a bit on the cool side because it is in the distance. And that's too dark. I want it same value to light. And that's a little better. Now I could reduce the um, saturation also, but just introducing a few different colors, mostly on the cool side. 
And in oil paint, that would blend in. That's too light, it's a different value. But you can see when I keep the value real close right there, it gives a little color variation, uh, but it's not a value change. And if it is, it's not much of one. So I wanna keep the value simple in the background and decide on what colors are gonna show the depth the best. And as I move from that, kind of come forward a bit, I'm gonna hit the darks in front. And I think they need to be a bit darker. Yeah, the sun was kind of poking in and out and I clicked the camera as it was going in. So I can increase that a little bit because the shape is already there, the shape of the dark shadow. So it just gives it more contrast. And color wise, again, I'm gonna go with more of a, a, a cooler green to blue green. And by cooler, I mean a bit more uh, blue in the green here than, than yellow, here, right there. A bit more green in there, I'm sorry, blue in there than yellow. And that keeps it cooler, which keeps it in the shadow. Cooler colors have kind of the absence of sunlight as opposed to warmer colors, which should have more yellows and oranges, but not as cool as the background. So my shadows in the background are gonna be a little cooler than the shadows in the foreground. Then from there, I'm gonna go um, to a little bit more halftone in the lights on the grass. I'm kind of keeping the color the same, this basic green to kind of yellow green. I'm going a bit darker, a bit more saturated, and that's more of a halftone than a light. Because I think the lights here are a bit on the halftone side. Uh, there's really no light lights. It's more of a, a, a cloudy day look where it's more half tone and shadow. The more the sunlight pops out, the lighter the lights are gonna get. So there's kind of the half tones uh, scattered around in areas where the, the form is kind of turning away from the light. So I see the light, lightest part of the grass, lightest part of the grass more in here and the half tones on the um, this area, and then the shadows down below. So simplifying that to just the three simple values. And right now I got dark, I got half tone, and then I will add, I think the lights, here we go. So I'm pushing the suggestion of sunlight on the top of these, you know, kind of subtle hills um, around the creek. So I have those three values. Here's the dark, dark, half tone, and the light. So I want to utilize those three values in the grass area, kind of that subtle hillside there, to show form, but also using those three values to show sunlight. And I could still go back into the light area and add some color variation. Um, but right now I'm more concerned about the three values to suggest the form on the hill. Which again, without uh, what I did, there isn't much form on this hill. It's a little on the flat side. There is some form, there is three values, but I'm pushing it a bit more. I'm making it a bit more obvious to make it stand out more. Then the same thing with the trees. I wanna go lighter on the lights on the trees. I wanna be careful though, that these light on the trees are um, a bit darker than the lights on the grass. If they're the same, it's gonna flatten out. So I have the same, somewhat same color, just a bit darker, not as much white. As you can see down in the grass, I added some orange, same value, a little bit of stronger green. It's a bit more of a half tone. Same thing in the, in the foliage up here. I've got about three different colors of foliage in the leaves. And that gives me some color variation, but keeping the lights the same value. It's having a bunch of little values in the trees or in the grass that's gonna give me too much detail and make the big simple shapes and design fall apart. And then lastly, I added a bit more lights uh, on the trees, more of a, a, a little bit of a cooler green, but warm enough to look like it's in the sunlight right here. And again, adding some oranges to the yellow green a little bit of a lizard and crimson maybe to the yellow green, uh, just to create a little subtle color change. Same thing in the grass. Even in the shadows here, I've got, a, got two different values 
light shadow and dark shadow. And then I've added same value, different color for a little bit of color variation to create some more interest. Keeping my darkest darks here, here. I can create where I want the darkest darks so I can move the viewer's eye around. Which again, the photograph doesn't do that. And I'm talking about photography that we usually do as painters whipping out the iPhone and just taking a quick photograph. And even with a good camera and you're, and you're photographing and you're having it developed, trying to do something with it, I still think we need to see differently than that. We need to really organize shapes, values, edges um, to design and, and, and direct the viewer's eye around the uh, composition. I added a horse here to balance the composition a bit more. All the weight is over here. With the cottonwoods up there, the water, the dark shadows down below. All the weight is on the left side. So a little bit of something on the right side will balance the painting a lot better. Now, not an equal balance. It's still a lot heavier on this side, but doesn't take much to give a, a good artistic va a balance in the painting. Also simplifying the background. Uh, the trees back in there, a lot of detail, a lot of little darks and lights in those trees. So pulling it together and having just simple dark and light. A couple of different colors in the light that are the same value, and then one value for the uh, shadows. I didn't mess with these trees over here, but I would. Um, and then the flat plane also, you can see it's a bit on the busy side also, but um, simplifying it, making it a bit lighter and brighter to make it recede and go back even more. Photograph doesn't give me a, enough value change in that background field to make it recede. So I want to push that a bit more. Pushing more contrast between the shadows on these trees in the background really helps create some depth in there. And the darks here really create a lot of strong contrast against the darks back in here and back in there. And I'm looking for that relationship between the darks in the background, middle ground, and foreground. Also, the relationship of the lights, how much stronger and more saturated the lights are here than they are back in here, and are even less saturated back on the mount. Simplifying a lot more than the photograph there to create more, more depth. And pushing the value contrast darker in the shadows on the trees and on the ground, and going lighter in the lights to create that suggestion of strong sunlight. Now, if I went for a cloudy day, I would probably still push the darks darker than what the photograph shows. I think the darks can still be a bit darker, even as a cloudy day. And I, I would not add the, the lights though. I wouldn't add the lights because that's what gives the intensity of the sunlight is the lighter, warmer lights. And we think on a cloudy day, the shadows are a lot lighter. I, not necessarily true. Uh, they're just as dark. It's just that you don't have the highlights created by the, by the sunlight. Now, on a sunny day, you have bigger patterns of shadow, cast shadow, because of the sunlight. So you don't have the cast shadow on a cloudy day, but where you do have darks, they are really dark. And so don't make the mistake of getting your lights too light. So again, looking back and forth, you can see cooler, bluer, more simple, uh, less saturated in the background and the middle ground, and then stronger color and stronger contrast between darks and lights and more color variation as well than the photograph to give that suggestion of light. And it's just not a matter of very intense color. I do have a lot of intense color in the lights, but also in the lights, there are some grayer colors, like in here, a little grayer green, um, a little more muted here. You know, these are real bright and, and cleaner colors, but having some less intense, more muted, almost gray sometimes, color next to the lights makes the stronger color stand out and become more effective. Think more as an artist than a camera and really try and get away from the idea of just copying the photograph. Sometimes it's kind of the default if we're struggling and painting from a reference, the default is just a copy. 
because you're not sure what else to do. So if I get enough detail in there and make it look like the photograph, it'll, it'll work. But I, I don't think that works. I think it just looks like a bad copy of a photograph. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, trying to see the difference between photograph and how we should see as an artist. Um, if it was helpful, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe if you would. And if you want to see more on how to adjust your thinking and your seeing when using a photograph, watch this next video, Mixing Color to Show the Light.